living for others. The Extraordinary Avas Yisrael of Rabbi Yonah Aftzen Oliver Shalom Rabbi Yonah Aftzen was a man known for his many talents, the driving force behind Sichus in English, an accomplished Shadchan, a dear friend and advisor, and most of all, a loving father, husband, grandfather, and family man. It seems that everyone thought they knew the real Yonah. But seeing all that he accomplished during his lifetime, one might not recognize the uniting force behind it all. His deep sense that life was not about him, it was about what he was needed for. He lived for others. Born on the 6th of Adar, 1957, to Rabbi Meir and Rebetzin Chiena Aftzen, Rabbi Yonah grew up steeped in a tradition of giving. Watching his parents welcome and care for others from all walks of life, spiritually and materially, even as they devotedly raised their own 15 children, Bliayin Hara, Rabbi Yonah learned to emulate those traits, and they would go on to follow him throughout his life. As a young man, he set out for New York to study in the Rebbe's yeshiva. He was introduced to and married his wife Rivka. May she live and be well. Together they built a home founded firmly on Torah and mitzvahs, a home always open to family and guests alike. Rabbi Yonah's caring nature extended far beyond his home. He was always going out of his way to help others in any way he could. I told him that I had six tapes that I produced from a lecture series on the Hebrew alphabet, and that perhaps he would want to sell those tapes in Sichos in English. At that time, Sichos in English was also selling tapes of different Hasidic ideas. And he listened to the tapes, and he came back a few days later, and he said to me, you know, Ari, I think we should do a book out of it. I said, are you serious? He says, yeah. And he helped me, he directed me exactly how to get the book from the cassettes onto paper, and he worked with me to, to reveal my, my talents. He had, had such a warm, outgoing personality that everybody felt like he was their best friend. I wouldn't even need to speak to him, Yena was already taking care of me. When we came to the Rebbe, Yena made sure that we were up front and center. He made sure we saw, he made sure we were there by the Rebbe. We came to the Rebbe, he made sure we were right in front of the Rebbe. He helped several young men looking for work or trying to build their new businesses by finding them jobs at Sichus in English. No favor was too big for him and no kindness was beneath his dignity. And he expected nothing in return because it was never about him. One example of this quiet, humble service is the way he took responsibility for his blokshul, originally known as Sosnovich. Although davening in 770 was very dear to him, he took to heart the Rebbe's request to keep the various neighborhood shuls open. One of the reasons that Yaina was involved in the shul so much, when the Rebbe spoke about the Shechun of Karn Heights, that the, the, the Meistus and Karn Heights have to see not to close down. And even after all the original members were not here with us anymore, we had our own shul. It was very difficult for us. There were only a few people, mostly elderly people. Uh, but Yaina was the young man. He was the Ruach HaChayim. He saw to it there was always a minion. If there was difficulty, he would be the one on the streets to going and gathering the minion. He would be the one if someone had to go to the Yomid. He always went to the Yomid, never complained. It was hard, it was difficult. He worked the alias. And the main thing, he made everybody feel happy. Everybody was comfortable. It was a small shul. No one really knew about us. It was a quiet shul. And yet, Yaina worked with such diligence, with such mysterious nefesh, with such involvement, as if it was like the biggest thing in the world. You only knew one thing. Is Yaina here? If Yaina is here, we know that everything is taken care of. There's nothing to worry about. There'll be a minion. There'll be a kiddush when necessary. There'll be about filler. Whatever had to be done, Yaina did it. We all just sat by the side and reaped the benefits of having this very special minion. While this quiet chesed went unobserved by many, another of Rabbi Yonah's projects, his work as a shadchan, was the talk of town. Beginning even before his own marriage, Rabbi Yonah was always thinking of potential matches. He saw his shidduchim as yet another way to help others, 
and he treated everyone who walked through his office with the utmost care and respect. He would spend many, many hours in his office trying to think of ideas of how to match a, a boy and a girl. Yaina did five of the six shidduchim of the children, my children that are married so far. And his involvement in shidduchim was thorough and complete and total. For those who consulted with Rabbi Yaina, he was a source of hope and an anchor of calm through sometimes stormy waters. He, he, he was always interested in our well-being and uh, he, would, he was always keeping uh, abreast, asking me what's, what's going on and what's doing with this one and what's doing with that one. Over the past 15 years, especially, Rav Yonah devoted large chunks of his day and night to answering emails, phone calls and messages from parents and their children. Though the work was tiring, disappointing and often thankless, he kept at it. And he was someone who was compassionate about helping out some, uh, some families that needed the help. And even if he wouldn't get any money from them, uh, he would do it because he wanted to help them. As the Rebbe said many times that the way we bring Mashiach is by having more children. And therefore he sought his mission and his goal to do whatever he could within his capacity to, to make more Shaduchim. And he worked tirelessly on this. I would call him in the middle of the night and he would scream at me and say, why are you calling me? And yet he would still answer my questions. Rabbi Yonah never gave up on anyone or got burnt out. He treated every successful shidduch as if it were his first. His excitement overflowing. Every time he would make another shidduch, if it was number 350 or 375, you know, he would call me up with such a, a, a smile. You could see the smile through the phone. How he would say, Rachmiel, you made, I made by the 376 Shidduch. It was a passion of his. It was something that he lived with. He used his wisdom to push a Shidduch forward. He was involved in the Simcha. I believe he came to every single one of my weddings. He slept down to Toronto to celebrate with us at the conclusion of a successful Shidduch. During his lifetime, Rabbi Yonah was Zeicha to assist in thousands of Shidduchim and bring almost 400 to fruition. While he celebrated each match, he was never content, so long as there was someone out there still in need of his assistance. May the schus of these deeds, those acknowledged and those which we will never know, as well as the hundreds of Jewish homes he built, and the thousands of neshamas brought down to the world as a result of his efforts, bring his neshama and aliyah, and serve as a guiding light for our actions so that we may see the ultimate shidduch of Hashem and B'nai Yisrael with the coming of Mashiach now. <laughs>